Hello guys, we're going to now going to be looking at question 5a part 1 of the January 2020 receipt paper. And it says a group of 100 students estimated the mass m in grams of a seed. The cumulative frequency curve below shows the result. Now if you look at the graph here, you notice on the x-axis we have the mass of a seed and that is in grams. And on the y-axis we have what is called the cumulative frequency. Now, Part A says, using the cumulative frequency curve, estimate 1, the median. Now, what is the median? The median is a data value that falls in the center. Now, we have to remember the kind of data that we plot on the cumulative frequency curve. It's continuous data. And in most cases, we can talk about it being in terms of group data. So, what do I do here? Now, with data like this, the position of the median and we can let me let me say median we can also call the median q2 which means the second quartile so we can talk about the position of q2 so the position of q2 is a half n where n is the cumulative frequency from my graph you can see that the highest point here when we come on to the y-axis is 100 so my cumulative frequency is 100 so i'm going to have a half of 100 which is equal to 50. Now this 50 simply represents the position and not the median. So what it means is that Q2, what I'm gonna have to do is go to the graph. So let me get my line tool to go to the graph. We find 50 on the y-axis. And we come across to the graph. So once you get to the graph, you stop. And then what you simply do is that you go down on the x-axis. Right. This is not a hundred percent straight, but if I catch it right here, as you can see, this is about three point two. How did I get three point two? There are five small lines in between, and you're between three and four, so you're going up by one. So if I were to divide one by the five lines, I would get point two. So the median here is actually three point two, and please remember the units. So it would be three. 0.2 grams. I'm going to put that there. 3.2 grams. So that is my median value. We're now on to part 2 of 5a on the paper. And it says, what is the upper quartile? Now we can also talk about the position of the upper quartile. So let me say position of Q3. The upper quartile is referred to as Q3. Is equal to 3 quarter of n. Now, n, again, is a cumulative frequency. So it would be 3 quarter of 100, which would turn out to give me 75. So I'm going to have to go back to my graph. So let me put it, pull it up here. We have to go back to the graph. And we're going to have to look on the cumulative frequency axis for 75. Right, so let me adjust this here. Now, on my y-axis, 75 is going to be midway between 70 and 80. So, we're looking at this position right here. So, we go across, and that's right in the middle there. Come across to the graph. We stop, and then we come down to the x-axis. All right, so here we can see that this is 4, this is 4.2. It's dead on in the middle between 4.2 and 4.4. .4. So we can actually say that it's 4.3. So we can actually say that Q3 is equal to 4.3. Don't forget the units, 4.3 grams. And that's it. Part 3 is asking us for the semi-interquartile range. Now I'm going to abbreviate that and I'm going to call it SIQR. Now the formula for this is actually Q3 minus Q1 all over 2. And hence the word semi, meaning that we divide by 2 or we half whatever we get. From part 2, we already know that the upper quartile is 4.3, which means all I need to find is Q1, which is the lower quartile. And we can use a similar concept. The position of Q1 is equal to a quarter N. 
And in this case, n is, of course, the cumulative frequency. So it's a quarter of 100, as we see from the graph, which is equal to 25. So we're going to have to go to the graph, find 25 on the cumulative frequency axis, and come across to the graph to determine what Q1 is. So let's go. So I'm going to have to find 25 on the y-axis. Now, 25 would be midway between 20 and 30. So it's going to be right here. We'll go across the graph. And then once we get to the graph, we make our way down to the x-axis. All right, so it should actually be right in the middle here. It's a bit off. And if we look here on the x-axis, we'd have 2.2, 2.3. So Q1 is actually 2.3. And of course, you know, this is in grams. So going back to the formula now, the semi-interquartile range would be equal to Q3, which you found in the previous question, which would be 4.3 minus the lower quartile, which is 2.3 all over 2. Now, 4.3 minus 2.3 would give me 2 over 2, which would be equal to 1 gram. So my semi-interquartile range is 1 gram. And finally, part 4 of the question is asking for the number of students whose estimate is 2.8 grams or less. So we have to go to the mass axis, which is my x-axis. We find 2.8 on the x-axis, and bear in mind, 2.8 would be between 2 and 3. And each of these small lines is 0.2. So this would be 2.2, 2.4, 2.6, 2.8. So we're going to go up on this line until we get to the graph. Once we get to the graph, we now go across to the vertical axis, which is my y-axis. There. Now, this is between 30 and 40, and there are five small lines, which means that each small line is two persons. So going up on this axis, I'm going to have 32, 34, 36, 38. So the number of persons whose estimate is 2.8 grams or less would be 38. And that is part four of the question. We now move to part B, question one. And it says, use the cumulative frequency curve on page 18 to complete the frequency table below. In the left, we have the mass of the seeds. And in the right, we have the frequency. Now, bear in mind that the curve that was drawn was the cumulative frequency. And there's a difference. If these were the class that we were looking at, we would have to continuously add the frequency going down to get the cumulative frequency, which means that when I want to go back to the frequency, I would have to subtract. Let us start with the first class because the cumulative frequency curve is plotted using the upper class boundary, which would be 2.5 and the cumulative frequency. For the first class, we know that the cumulative frequency and actual frequency is the same. So I would find 2.5 on the x-axis, which would be somewhere about here. I would go up to the curve and then would actually come over to the y-axis which would give us the frequency of 20, which is also the cumulative frequency. For the second class, I would find the upper boundary, which is 4.5, and I would plot that on the graph, and I would go up to the graph here. And then we come across. So this looks like 70, but 70 is my cumulative frequency. So notice where my two red lines are now. One is at 70, one is at 20. So to get my frequency, I would have to subtract 20 from 70, which would be equal to 50. So 50 would be my frequency for my second class. We use a similar concept for the third class. We're going to be looking for 6.5, which is going to be somewhere about here. We we'll go up to the graph. And we come across. So 
so this should actually fall right in the middle there which would make it 93 but we all know that 93 is a cumulative frequency so we have to look where the two lines are so this would be 93 and this is 70 so we say 93 minus 70 would actually give me 23 that would be my cumulative or that would be my frequency rather not my cumulative frequency now part two which is the final part of b says a student is chosen at random find the probability that the estimated mass find the probability that the student estimated mass to be greater than six grams or has estimated the mass to be greater than six grams if we go back to the graph we would have found out that 93 students estimated the mass to be six grams or less overall you have a hundred students so the number of students would have estimated it to be more than six grams so the probability and let me use some symbols here that estimated mass i can't i would say the probability of m so let us say the probability of m is greater than six this would be equal to the number of students who are greater than six here which we found out that in all we had 92 stu 93 students who estimated it to be six or less and overall we have 100 students so that would be equal to seven over 100 would have estimated it to be more than six grams